Hi everyone, Miss Krista here from the Kishner Library and today I'm going to share with you a tutorial on pour painting. This was always a really favorite program that we offered at our branch occasionally and I thought I'd show you guys how you can do it at home too. For this project you're going to need to buy some canvases. I like to buy packs of like 10 when they're on sale at the craft store. You're probably going to need more canvases than you think because it's super fun and addicting. Um, you're going to need some acrylic paint. Here I tried metallic paint for the first time with pour paint and you get some really cool kind of galaxy effects. Um, I had a little bit of a hard time with the colors wanting to mix a little bit, so you might want to go ahead and try regular acrylic paint first. You are also going to need Floetrol. This is a pouring medium that most pour painters like to use. You can get this at the paint department at most home improvement stores, and um, it's going to help your pour paint pour. You are also going to need lots of disposable cups and spoons or um, craft sticks for stirring, newspaper to lay down to protect your surfaces, and if you're feeling really fancy and want to get into pour painting, I suggest also buying some silicone and a blowtorch. Um, I will talk more about that later. You don't need it for this project. You'll get some really pretty pour paints without it, but it's a really fun addition to this project. Here is my little setup, lots of newspaper. That is the flow trail you'll need for this project. And the little yellow bottle is liquid silicone. Apparently it's used for treadmills. Um, here I've got my canvases down on newspaper. I like to put a box or a jar. You can use four push pins on the back in the corners. You don't want it resting on your newspaper while it's drying. And here is my paints and my cups and I've got my craft sticks for stirring. Here I'm going to show you how to mix up your paint. So for every color you want to add to your pour paint, your pour painting, um, I'm going to add, first I add some Floetrol to the cup and then the acrylic paint. Depending on the acrylic paint you choose, you might need more or less than I am using. It's all about how thick it is and how pigmented it is. I've used lots of different kinds of acrylic paints and they've all worked great. I just had to use sometimes more or less depending on um, the consistency of it. Um, even cheap craft paint is fine with this. You just might need more for the colors that you want. And after you get all the colors you want for your pour paint, you just start pouring them into a clean, well, at least an empty cup. This one's been pour painted in before, so it's got some pour stains. Definitely reuse your cups when you can. And all you're going to do is just layer in your paint. Um, you can get creative. You can do lots of colors, a few colors. You can do big pours. I don't suggest doing little tiny pores because the paint will try to mix a little bit. And black and white, I caution you to do either at the end or the beginning. It can sometimes eat up the paint you're painting. Um, I've had that before where it's like, whoa, this is all black. So just be careful sometimes with those colors. So this is the first pour I'm going to show you. Uh, it's often called the tree ring pour because it makes a little tree ring effect but it's basically just pouring it onto the canvas. You can do it fast, slow, you can move your cup around. It's all up to you. And I like to use about half the cup first. And then of course move all that paint around the canvas. It's not gonna be enough to cover. And so as soon as it's kind of done doing its first little flow, I will add the rest of the paint. You can do the middle or another corner. It's up to you. This is why it's so fun. Um, you can try all kinds of different ways of doing pour painting with different pours. I like this because you have a lot more control too. Um, and of course that second pour, we got more of a light blue color. So that's another reason why it's fun to do two pours. You get all kinds of different results whenever you kind of break up your pores onto your canvas. This is when your hand's going to get really messy. <laughs> you definitely want some paper towels. And I'm sorry if it's a little wonky. I'm trying to record with one hand there. So here is the dirty pour. You're going to just put your cup on top of the canvas and then flip and then pick up your cup and it's going to all plop out. I don't let it drain too long because I want to retain a little bit of paint in that cup for later. This is the fastest way to do pour paint and the least control, but a lot of fun. It basically just needs to pour and flow all over the canvas and it happens really fast, which is another reason why it's addicting. It doesn't take long to do a pour paint. Now with that extra paint in my cup, if there's a corner or something missing, I'll cover that. And then you can also do another little pour and create cool little waves. So that's another thing to keep in mind is you can do things like that pour another little layer on and move it around and you'll get a different kind of textures and designs 
Now I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the silicone and the blowtorch. So for each color I mixed up, I added a little bit of silicone to each cup of individual color. That silicone will help create more air bubbles in your paint and the blowtorch will help pop those bubbles. And those bubbles create what they call cells and it's those little pops of color you see in the painting are the air bubbles that have popped. And when you're doing this, you want to be very careful. It's very hot and you want to graze the painting lightly with the, so you can see some popping there. This was my second go around with the blowtorch. So you may not see much action um, right now. It was rather challenging to record with one hand, but um, I think you probably see the effect that that blowtorch and silicone have on the painting. You will have some air bubble popping without the silicone and the blowtorch, but you will get much more when using those two two tools so definitely not necessary for pour paint but it is a lot of fun just be very careful here i'm going to show you a second pour of the dirty pour but first i laid down a layer of the flow trawl and then did the dirty pour you can do this with just the plain flow trawl you can mix up black or another color and do a layer on the canvas first this will help um, it does a couple of things first that first layer of paint is gonna flow off first. So you get to retain more of the paint from your cup of colors. And sometimes that's nice. You're not wasting too much of the colorful paint. Secondly, it will um, pop through that color you use on the bottom. So in this case, you'll see some white popping through. And if you um, have some air bubbles pop, whether it's from na nature or you use a blowtorch, you will get more of that white coming through. So me and Miles here are gonna do a little bit of the um, blowtorch. And like I said, please be very careful. It can get very hot. Uh, adult supervision, definitely advised. So here you see that white popping through and the little air bubbles. I really hope you get a chance to do this project. It's a lot of fun. It's super messy. If you can see here, I had a couple disasters in my backyard. But anyways, I hope you guys are all doing well and I will see you next week with another craft. Bye.